Yeah, th thanks for the introduction. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. This is, uh, I've heard so much about this conference over the years, I'm glad I can make it. Uh, so this is where you can get in touch with me if you have any questions uh, you know, about the talk later on. Uh, so Crystal itself, um, I've been a contributor to the language uh, for a little over a year, and I wrote a Postgres driver for it, um, because Postgres is pretty cool. Uh, but so what is uh, Crystal? It is a very Ruby-inspired language, and so if you come to it as a Rubyist, you'll feel like right at home, uh, but it's compiled. And it's compiled with uh, the tool chain called LLVM, which powers a lot of the Apple ecosystem, also PlayStation and some others. And I think that's really important because um, all of the advances that go into LLVM, uh, if you use an LLVM language such as Crystal, Rust, Swift, you get all of that advancements yourself too. And so a lot of the speed that Crystal has uh, is due to the language itself, but a lot of it is due to uh, all the optimizations that go into LLVM over the last uh, 10 or so years that LLVM's been around. Uh, it's entirely self-hosted, and so that means that the Lexer, the Parser, the Compiler, the Standard Library, all is in Crystal itself, so it's really easy to go in and uh, you know, contribute to the language, see how things are done, and even more importantly, when you write your own code, uh, the optimizations can go from your code to the Standard Library, and it can, there's no like barrier there that uh, if you have a standard library in C and your, your things in Ruby, there can't, there's sort of a barrier between the optimizations that can happen. Um, the main difference, though, is that it is statically typed in a static dispatch. And you might think, okay, well, that can't be very Ruby-like. But uh, as you will go on to see when I show some examples, it can still feel like Ruby because a lot of the times there's type inference. So you don't have to say the types. And because it has a pretty unique way of doing uh, unions of types if your method returns two different types or more, uh, it creates a union of those types. And so you can, it still feels like there's duct typing. It still feels uh, very at home. And it is very fast. Uh, and this is just to get you know, a little excited. Uh, Crystal here is on the left, Ruby's on the right. And you can see you know, the Kamal framework is a lot like Sinatra. Uh, this it looks very similar. But if you run it through you know, a benchmark here, you can see that it's an order of magnitude faster, an order of magnitude more requests per second, and two orders of magnitude uh, less RAM. Now, you know, micro benchmarks aside, you know, yeah, take those with a grain of salt, but it shows that there's, you know, even for your regular code, uh, you can probably see some good improvements. Uh, and don't take my word for it, uh, sidekick author uh, Mike per Perman, uh, three days after coming to the language for the first time, was able to make a minimum viable, like, sidekick implementation, and then after finishing it, you saw you know, maybe five to 10x improvements on some of the uh, things he was doing. So what are, what are the similarities? Uh, it has uh, object-oriented stuff, it has blocks, much of the standard library that you're used to in Ruby, like this, this code uh, works the same as it does in Ruby and Crystal, uh, and this is compiling and running it here on the right. Uh, so this is all you know, very much the same. Uh, it even has a, uh, a spec framework, which is pretty cool, that uh, it won't do the syntax coloring correctly in the thing, but you, know, you can have some nice specs that built in so you can feel right at home. But let's get into you know, some more of the differences of what makes this, it's not a different language instead of just being a compiled Ruby. This, this code here has uh, you know, pretty much the same as Ruby, except you can see the, uh, the property part up here is it's property instead of adder accessor, and there's a little bit of a type annotation there. But one of the nice things you can do uh, in Crystal here is if you put in at signs up top, you don't need to do the, it sort of does the uh, common thing of putting something in an instance variable. It does that for you, which is, it's not, that's not a huge thing, but it is nice and takes down a little bit of some boilerplate. Uh, you can see here it works just like OOP. Uh, one of the things I like the most, though, is this uh, fancier two proc. And so you have an array here, and you know, we can use uh, upcase. Uh, you'll notice here that it's a period instead of a colon, and that's very, I think a lot of the speed comes from that, because if you print it out, it's only half the amount of ink. Uh, <laughs> but but what, what is actually useful is you can, uh, you can chain the methods there. You don't have to, if you want to do a couple things, you don't have to go out to the bigger block syntax. And you can even call methods on it and sort of and do things like that. So for little simple things, 
you know, it's just, it, you know, it's, again, this is a small thing, but it's, I think it's a nice improvement. But the big difference is the type system and how this is actually a statically typed uh, language. Now, I mentioned before that it's static dispatch, and that means at uh, runtime, it doesn't have to go looking for a method chain to look where to call. It's just, that's all done at compile time. And the way that actually works is that this, this function here that, double, that mo runs multiply two, it actually makes two different methods. And so you can see here that the compile time type, it's known that it's gonna be int and string, and this is done at compile time. But the, un the union types is what actually makes it be able to have a typed language but still feel nice. And so we have a little method here that if the number is greater than 10, it returns the number. Otherwise, it returns the string too low. Uh, it's a very bad validation method. And if so, if you pass in 15, we get the answer 15 back. If we pass in uh, the, a string called low, or number one, then we get too low coming, we get too low coming back. The runtime type is int and string, but the compile type, you see, it's a union of int and string. And so what does that mean? If we run multiply by two on it, on the results, that all works fine. We get 30 and we get the string repeated. But if we try and add do plus, we're gonna get a problem with the, the, uh, the method. And that's because while strings do have the plus method, they don't have it with an integer. They have it with, um, they have it with a character and they have it with another string. So if we try and do a naive thing and go up here and remove these two lines, and now we're just returning it or nil, now the thing that used to work fails to work because there's no method uh, multiply for nil. And in Ruby, you see this all the time at runtime, we're saying you know, undefined method on nil. Here, this is being caught at compile time. And there's no special nil checking, this is just falling out of the fact that we're creating a union of int and nil. Uh, the other kind of thing that's nice if you have uh, these type annotations, normally you don't have to say them, but in Ruby, in library code especially, you see things, this is a little bit overwrought example, but you see things like this where you're switching on the types as you come in, and you have to do that every time the methods run, you know, over and over again, and it gets, you know, it's a little ugly. Uh, but if you want to say the types in Crystal, uh, you can then break out the methods and do overloading, and this provides you know a little bit of a nicer interface where you can still have um, have a nice you know function calls, but have it be fast and not be doing all that type checking at, at runtime. Uh, we're not going to get too much into the macros, but one thing that's nice is that this is how you can still have uh, you know some adder adder readers, adder writers, and such. Uh, my favorite one here is the pretty print one because it takes the uh, the, 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 the code that you have and puts that in there. And so if you're doing like some puts debugging, you know, it's, a, it's a nice to know exactly what it is instead of having to add uh, little annotations everywhere. Uh, and this is just a, a real quick example of how if you were gonna do macros, so instead of uh, adder reader or adder accessor, it's getter inside Crystal. Uh, and this is how it's defined with sort of just like a you know, ERB thing but for your code which is, uh, it's really easy to, to write these yourself. Uh, so when I first did the Postgres driver, I did it linking against the libpq, which is the Postgres uh, client library, and these 10 lines here is actually all you need to link against a C library, pull up the couple functions that you want, and then ex connect to the database here uh, and issue a query. And you can see here this is actually, you know, a live thing and it's running a query against my local Postgres that's running. And like the fact that you can link against something with this, just this little amount of code is really powerful, especially for a language that's new like Crystal because there's not all that too many libraries and being able to lean on all the you know, vast array of C libraries and do it very easily is nice. And just as one last thing, uh, one difference between Crystal structs and Ruby structs is that in Crystal they, um, they look to be uh, the same, but instead, uh, it's a difference of if they're allocated on the stack or the heap, and when it's a class, it's, it's over on the heap, and that has to be garbage collected, uh, but it works as you'd expect. If you make it a struct, uh, it then, you can't change the values in it. In runtime, you see, like, I tried to call change name, and it didn't actually work, uh, but the advantage is it's on the, just on the stack, and it doesn't have to be garbage collected. And so if you have a lot of small things you're making, if you make it structs, it makes your program like way faster because it doesn't have to put any pressure on the GC. 
Uh, and then just as a final thing, one, one way that you get a lot of speed in Crystal is that all of the methods that do 2S or your um, string uh, interpolation in the middle actually gets rewritten at compile time to be I.O. objects. And so that way it's not allocating lots of little strings and then concatenating together with more strings. Like it still feels like you're doing it in Ruby, but uh, it's just all putting it into a buffer and so it's really fast. And I guess I had one last thing. And so the, a lot of people ask about concurrency and it, this one they've hit, leaned very heavily on like the Go community of coroutines and channels. And uh, so if you're familiar with that uh, method, it's the same. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. If you're interested in trying it, uh, that's how you can get it.